Just 0.3 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight for seven days prior to running can completely abolish the inflammatory response that happens after a run, meaning you can recover a lot better. Creatine is not just for the strength athlete. It's not just for quick explosive energy. We have this thought process that creatine makes our muscles work faster and makes us sprint faster. But we forget that it's not necessarily affecting the muscle, it's more so affecting the energy system that fuels the muscle. Well, that same energy system that fuels the muscle also fuels very important processes in our body, like our gut and like our inflammatory response. So if we can help that situation out, maybe we can make ourselves better endurance athletes. I do wanna make sure you hit the red subscribe button and then hit that bell icon so that you never ever miss a beat on this channel. I'm not a doctor, I'm some guy on the internet, but I did lose 100 pounds and I do know a fair bit of biochem. After this video, check out Juve Red Light Therapy. Uh, the reason I mention it with this video is because it's very applicable for people that are into endurance work. So Juve is utilizing what is called photobiomodulation, just a really cool thing. I encourage you to check them out. So if you use it after your runs or you use it uh, in the evening time to help you recover, it works with the mitochondria through light therapy. And I know it sounds kind of wild, but it makes a whole lot of sense, especially when you start looking at the peer reviewed journal. So anyhow, check Juve out down below in the description after you watch this video. Well, since creatine sort of provides us with quick energy, we don't think that it works in an aerobic setting. But let me tell you kind of indirectly how it does. First, we'll touch on the gut, and then we'll touch on another component with actual inflammatory response and recovery. So have you ever gone for a run or you've done some endurance exercise that is maybe a little bit more than you normally do, and you've experienced that just serious gastric distress that happens? Well, that's probably because endurance activity ends up affecting the gut in a negative way. That's why there's porta potties every quarter mile when someone's running a marathon, because people have issues with it and it's common. What happens is it's a redistribution of blood flow. That redistribution of blood flow is moving blood to the muscles, which means it's pulling away from the colon and the small intestine. That's called ischemia. And then you don't have as much oxygen because it's getting used by muscles, so you have what's called hypoxia. So in essence, your gut is getting starved. This makes it so that the cells can prematurely die and that weakens your gut, making you have a tummy ache and making you feel quite, quite miserable. Well, let's talk about how creatine can affect this and then we'll get into the real fun stuff. So the journal PNAS took a look at mice that had a defective gene. Now, the reason this is relevant is because this gene played a role in creatine synthesis. So these mice didn't have the ability to synthesize creatine. Well, what they found is when they can't synthesize creatine, they ended up with colitis. They ended up with all kinds of issues with their gut because they weren't able to create a gut mucosal layer. Well, when they supplemented them with creatine, they found, hey, what do you know? These mice are actually able to create a gut mucosal layer. And that just comes down to the fact that our intestinal cells need creatine to replenish the cells within it. So they actually need creatine to recreate. Okay, whenever they're under attack, whenever your gut is going through serious bouts of inflammation, it's under a lot of stress, which means it needs an external source of energy. So it pulls from creatine. But if your creatine stores are low, then it doesn't necessarily help your gut, right? There's nothing to do. So the short answer is creatine acts as sort of an energy buffer. It provides your gut with uh, additional bout of energy, like additional kind of carrier of energy that it can pull from while the rest of your body is using energy for running. So you don't have to worry about your gut kind of taking a back seat because creatine's got it handled. But that's one piece. But now let's talk about sort of the inflammation that occurs after endurance work that might really make you feeling kind of cruddy. So the Journal of Internal Medicine as well as the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise published that after any kind of endurance work or after any kind of uh, longer run or aerobic activity, you have a pretty massive increase in leukocytes, in blood lactate, in interleukin-1, as well as what's called tumor necrosis factor alpha. These are all inflammatory markers, meaning after a workout that is endurance related, you have big surges of inflammation. We have to combat that somehow. And normally just standard recovery would help that. But some studies show that using creatine as a preventative can help out with that after the case. So the Journal of Life Sciences published that if you consume 20 grams of creatine per day for five days prior to like an ultra marathon in this case, there was significant reductions in prostaglandin E2, leukocytes, tumor necrosis factor, alpha after a 30 kilometer run. 
That means that by taking creatine beforehand, you're giving your body some energy that is somehow modulating inflammation. But here's another one. The Journal of Amino Acids, same exact dose, 20 grams a day for five days prior to Ironman triathlons. Guess what? No major increases in inflammation that are normally correlated after a race. Your recovery is better. Then lastly, the Journal of Nutrition, the one that I opened with, just 0.3 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight for seven days prior to running completely abolished the tumor necrosis factor alpha increase that you would normally see. I don't know if this is really resonating because I know it's a little bit of Greek to a lot of people, but what this means is that creatine is somehow either hydrating or acting as an antioxidant buffer to the point where the muscles aren't getting damaged from the workout as much. So they're able to recover. This is tremendous if you're doing something that's a little bit different from what you would normally do and you wanna feel good afterwards. Most researchers are leaning towards the fact that it's probably creatine acting upon what is called the adenosine pathway, which is just kind of uh, attenuating inflammation that might happen during a run. So if you're training and you're doing longer runs or longer rides and you wanna be able to get back to a longer ride faster, creatine supplementation would be a very strategic move because that is a rate limiting step for a lot of people. Imagine this, you only get a chance to do a marathon length training run one time per week because it's all you have to recover. But your competitor has the ability to do it three times per week. Who do you think is going to yield a better outcome at the race? Probably the person that can do more training. So if creatine potentially allows those inflammatory markers to come down and get you back on the road faster so you can have more training sessions, you're going to have a better outcome more than likely. The other piece that is considered is cell hydration. Okay, Creatine draws water into the muscle, which means that the cells can be more hydrated, which means that they have the ability to fight off oxidative stress. This is powerful because that means you have your existing, pre-existing buffer that is going to prevent some of that stress that occurs while you are beating your muscle up while you're running. So it's not just for the strength athletes, it's for the endurance athletes too. Creatine has its place in multiple different directions. I'll see you tomorrow.